All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a food uh, container, food can, like you see in a store, and then properly texture it. That way it can be rendered. <clears throat> That's, of course, what it looks like in the viewport and render view, and this is what it looks like fully rendered. All right, now I had posted this image to my community tab, and it's there if anybody wants to see it. All right, <clears throat> now this label right here will be, there will be a link so you can download this just in case you want to follow along with this tutorial. But essentially how I created this label, <clears throat> now I, I, before I go any further, I still can't quite get rid of that code. So if you hear me, <clears throat> stuff like that, it's because I'm trying to clear my throat so I don't cough. But essentially all I did was peel this label off really carefully and then I put it in my flatbed image scanner and um, from there I just cropped it a little bit because you can see it's at a slight angle <clears throat> but I cropped it just a little bit that way it would be perfectly rectangle and it would work better it's even though it's slightly off a little bit and wasn't quite lined up perfectly in the scanner it's close enough that it will work now if you don't have a flatbed scanner you can actually take a picture of a label with your phone or with a better camera <clears throat> and it works just fine it's just not as easy to get as flat of an image but anyway <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna go up to file new and start a new project <clears throat> first thing I'm gonna do is create the can and this is kind of a blurry image but I'm just I'm not going to create all these ribs in the middle because you're not going to see it It's because the label would cover it up anyway but I'm going to for the most part create the rest of it sort of how that looks <clears throat> doesn't have to be perfect by no stretch of the imagination add mesh and then we're going to go with a cylinder now <clears throat> this cylinder has 32 faces we don't need that many faces because this is somewhat low poly so I'm just going to set this on 24 because that's enough faces to make it look good and round but it's uh, less geometry <clears throat> all right now I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and I'm just going to go ahead and put this in face select and I'm going to scale this on the z-axis and I'm just eyeballing it doesn't have to be perfect probably about right there <clears throat> now you could be you can measure the can and make everything precise if you want it to, but I just don't think it's needed. Maybe if you was doing an actual product ad, then yeah, it would probably be needed. So let's make the top lip. <clears throat> and as we can see on this reference image, let me go ahead and close this image so we can actually bring it up easier. It's got that little lip at the top, and then it actually goes down into it a little bit. So, I'm going to select this top face, and I'm going to press E for extrude, and then enter, and then I'm going to press S for scale, and I'm just going to bring this out just a little bit. See how it brought it out just a little bit? Then I'm going to press E for extrude, go up just a little bit, maybe about like that. Alright, now I'm just going to tilt it down just a little bit so we can see inside of it. <clears throat> and I'm going to press insert or I for inset and then I'm going to bring this in just a little bit probably probably about like that and then <clears throat> I'm going to press inset one more time and I'm going to bring it in just a hair not that much and then I'm going to press G for grab and then Z for the Z axis and then just drop this down to about right there again it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just trying to make it look somewhat legit now <clears throat> we do want to do a couple of things these edges we do want to round off just a little bit so we already have this circle selected or this edge on the inside se selected so press shift and then alt and then select an edge there pardon me I gotta let me press ctrl Z gotta put this on edge select first 
<clears throat> then press shift alt and then select the edge and then same with this edge right here and then press control B and then just give it just a little bit of edge one cut is fine I mean you can go more cuts if you want but one cut is fine <clears throat> all right now you could do the same thing to this outside edge matter of fact I'm probably going to because it if you look close it's going to be kind of sharp looking so I'm going to pr press alt and then select this edge and then the shift alt and select this edge and press control B and then just add one little cut all right now with the bottom what we need to do put it back on face select select the bottom face now <clears throat> these cans they they are designed to stack on top of each other so whatever profile you have in here you need to have the opposite profile in down here so up here you can see how it slants inward and it's more narrow at the bottom and a little bit wider at the top so this bottom portion we need to make it just the opposite well the same but kind of the opposite kind of like a mirror I guess you could say it's kind of hard to explain or at least I don't know the terminology for it but I'm gonna press E for extrude and then just bring it down to about right there and then press S for scale bring it in just a little bit doesn't have to be perfect just somewhat makes sense <clears throat> all right now we're almost finished finished actually so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna give this a material <clears throat> uh, well actually before we do that I want to make this a little bit rounder at the bottom with this edge right here I'm going to press control B and then just add one little cut like that just to make it just a little bit rounder a little bit smoother looking all right <clears throat> Now I'm just going to press 1 to go in the front side view, and I'm going to add a material. I'm going to click New, and I'm going to make this the metal material. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this to kind of a slight gray, because we're trying to make it replicate like stainless steel or tin or whatever the material the cans are made out of. I don't think it's tin, because... A magnet will stick to it so it's some kind of metal with some kind of steel I mean <clears throat> all right now I'm going to turn the metallic up all the way and then set the roughness probably to point one five <clears throat> and we're probably about right at this point for that let me see. yeah that's probably about right and we need to add another material and this other material will be our label and we're going to add an image texture and we're going to add what wherever you put your image texture for uh, uh, that label that you download it if you're if you download it that label and here it is all right <clears throat> and we'll get it lined out in a minute we're going to go ahead and uh, select everything press U and I'm going to choose smart UV project <clears throat> and now I'm going to uh, press uh, or pardon me I'm going to come up here to this corner and then just drag this over and I'm going to change this one to a UV editor alright <clears throat> now I'm going to click this right here and open up the ravioli label alright now over here I'm gonna press A to s twice to select nothing then I'm gonna put this in wireframe and I'm gonna pre press B for box select select the center portion so that all of it <clears throat> where the label would be is selected and you can see that it's not lined up because if I was to look over here at the label part of its over here and part of its over here so what we need to do while this part is selected press U 
and then press cylinder projection all right which basically lines up all the UV faces end to end now the UV faces are going the wrong way or the texture is going the wrong way rather because uh, this is going to put try to wrap the label around this way instead of this way so all we need to do is just press R for rotate and then 90 enter now let's go ahead and come back over here and we'll put this in um, like color view or whatever and we're going to go ahead and with this material select it, click assign now we can see how it looks and we know it does not look right so what we need to do <clears throat> is basically scale this down on the x-axis we want to zoom in so we can see it better S for scale make sure your mouse is over top this window S for scale and then X and then just bring this in till it's lined up with the edges alright now we need to scale it on the Y axis I want to go ahead and zoom in so that it goes all the way to the end S for scale Y and then just scale it till it goes all the way to the end. And the other side should automatically be matched because it put it in the center of the label anyway. All right, now we can look at this and we can see it's upside down. So all we have to do is just press R for rotate, 180, enter. Now it's lined up. Simple enough. All right, now go ahead and press tab to exit edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and pull this over because we don't need the UV editor no more. Now if we look at it, we can see the geometry of the uh, can. We don't want to see that. Same way with up here, we don't want to see the geometry. So, simple way to fix that is just come up here to object and choose shade smooth. Now when we do that, the geometry looks like it disappears, but you can see in here it looks weird. So how do we fix that up here so it doesn't look so weird? Well, all we have to do, and it looks weird down here too, looks almost like an oil filter. <laughs> but to fix this, all we have to do is come over here to the modifiers tab, add modifier, and choose edge split. Now it looks a whole lot better. And that's pretty much all we need to do. Now, just for fun, I'm going to press 1 for front side view, and I'm going to add a floor, add mesh, plane, scale it up, and then I'm just going to grab this on the z-axis, move it down to the bottom, I'm going to zoom in so I can get it placed just right, grab z, and then just put it right at the bottom, alright, and I'm going to set up the camera, Put this on, uh, turn the camera, choose the camera, put it on view, lock camera to view, line the camera up. Alright, now I'm going to uh, select the floor, give the floor a, a material. I'm just going to make it a black color because I kind of like that, the way that looks in this scene and make the roughness probably about 0.1 and now if I set this up for render, render image now I have an HDRI in the scene so that's you won't have it but you can also I'm going to just go ahead and turn off the HDRI and then set up a lamp press 3 to go on a side view actually one one instead of three and I'm gonna add mesh not mesh uh, light point and grab that light put it out here set the power to probably 2500 and instead of pure white I'll give this a slight yellow tinge and that's about right look at it back through the camera stick in a render view and that's pretty much what it looks like of course without any other lighting which I'm gonna just 
add just a little bit of the my HDR back into it but you you lie to however you want but this is pretty much what it looks like if you have any questions about how to go about doing this let me know but realistically this is what it looks like I, the material on the uh, the metal material probably needs a little bit of work uh, let me see where am I at right here <clears throat> let me give this a little bit rougher of a material that looks that looks way better but for a somewhat low uh, mesh count or low poly object this does not look bad at all but anyway I guess that's it if you have any questions let me know later people